Well, let us begin. Yeah. Shall Very we good. So I, I should say hello, everyone. Uh, we're going to briefly introduce ourselves or each other. Uh, we, we can decide on that. Yeah. Uh, and then we will start uh, with the topic at hand. Um, so go ahead. Uh, Gil, say something. Uh, like hello, you. everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Gil Rivak. I'm an assistant professor here at Judaic Studies, uh, Center for Judaic Studies here at the University of Arizona. I'm David Graysboard, an associate professor of uh, Jewish history. Uh, I focus on uh, the early modern world, but uh, lately I've, uh, you might say, become in interested in American Jewry. So, uh, Gil, we, we meet today uh, to talk about uh, whether American Jewry is in crisis. So with that overarching question in mind, what would you say are some of the main challenges that American Jewry faces today? I mean, let's start with the uh, term crisis because it has become a little bit trite already in 1964. Life magazine um, published a very well-publicized article that was called The Vanishing American Jew, mm -hmm. or I think with a question mark, and, and it kind of raised the question, are we going to have within a generation or two generations a viable American Jewry? So the question of crisis has been around for the last half century, if not more, mm -hmm. and, and indeed has become somewhat trite. The question is that, uh, I think in recent years, what you have is that... Um, there is more attention to certain problems, certain mm -hmm. endemic problems mm -hmm. that have been, you know, they have been always in the background, but seem to be to come to the fore in the last decade or two decades. Mm -hmm. Now we can say some of them have to do with quantity, some of them have to do with quality. Mm -hmm. Quantity, of course, are, you know, the, the question whether American Jewry is declining, uh, what is the rate of decline, uh, different scholars have different views uh, about that. The more important questions are not numbers. The, mm -hmm. more, question, uh, the more important questions are the, uh, about the quality of American mm -hmm. Jewish life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that you are, and, and I'll, you know, you're uh, about to publish a book of, of interviews with young, Amer young American Jewish millennials mm -hmm. that deals with that. Yes. I, I think both of us are very interested in the questions of quality, not just quantity, since, oh, I mean, among other things, we're not demographers. Uh, we're not sociologists. But uh, how would you characterize, then, um, the qualitative issue? the question of, of uh, quality of life, cultural substance, yeah. thickness, whatever you want to call it. Right, so scholars were trying to kind of define, kind of work around those questions. Some <clears> people <throat> tried to talk about the decline. Some people tried to talk about the transformation. Some people talked about revival. According to a certain school of thought, since the late 60s, early 70s, with the rise of the so-called um, ethnic wave in America, uh, there is a certain revival of Jewish, uh, of Jewishness, the display of Jewishness. You can see people walking with the fringes, with the tzitzis out, mm -hmm. rather than a baseball cap, you know, the kippah, the yarmulke is out. Uh, more lightning of menorahs during Hanukkah, we just finished celebrating Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. uh, much more, many more displays of Jewishness, more uh, Jewish museums, Holocaust museums, and so on. Mm -hmm. Other people said, well, you know what, that should not be the yardstick because that is not that does not mean necessarily that um, Jewish life is, is, uh, is in a revival. And that's why we, we thought about, you know, framing the, the, the whole debate here is whether America was, you know, good for the Jews, but bad for Judaism. Yeah. Uh, and I think, again, the question is to kind of separate the, the situation of individual Jews mm -hmm. and, and the, mm -hmm. the state of Jewishness or slash Judaism. Mm -hmm. And I think here we have certain uh, alarming, let's say, features. Yeah. Uh, the latest Pew report, everyone speaks about that from 2013. Uh, is talking about 72% intermarriage among non-Orthodox Jews, who are the majority, mm -hmm. among 85 to 90% of all American Jews. Other people have pointed out to the fact that w within that survey, almost the same people wrote that to be Jewish is to have a sense of humor, mm -hmm. as, you know, actually more people said to have a sense of humor is much more important than, let's say, practicing Judaism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, when you put that in kind of this context, the, the problems seem, I mean, both quantitative and qualitative. Yeah, yeah. That you've, uh, you, earlier you alluded to a, a number of approaches to the analysis of the, of the situation. Um, as, a, as a historian, do you see particular schools of thought coalescing around different interpretations? Let's say the revival thesis versus the Oy vey, you know, we are democratic, we're decreasing in number and in substance uh, thesis. Well, the oy vey thesis that, uh, look, in the 1970s, people start, began talking about uh, a silent Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And they, they be, uh, from, from integration, you might say that whether uh, throughout most of American Jewish history, uh, the, the focus was on integration, Americanization. That was very important. Mm -hmm. um, 
established jury um, invested a lot of efforts and a lot of money in trying to Americanize the newcomers mm -hmm. from the late 60s into the 70s. And, and it has to do also with identity politics and stuff which is going on around them. American Jews, or at least some of the, the established American Jews, are have put an emphasis on on survivalism, mm -hmm. meaning uh, will there be will there be uh, sure. another one, two, three generations? Mm -hmm. And I think, of course, uh, just to give a little bit of background, keep in mind, nineteenth century Reform Judaism already as early as eighteen twenty five, when the first uh, Reform Society in Charleston, South Carolina, was established. They said, well, you know what? First of all, we don't understand the prayers; they're in Hebrew. Uh, second of all, why should we pray for some stone? Yeah, Isaac Harvey, the, the one of the co-founders, said, "Why should we pray for some, you know, stony, some stones in Zion or whatever?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in 1841, when they rededicated their uh, uh, synagogue, they said, "This this synagogue is our temple. Mm -hmm. This city is our Jerusalem. This blessed land is our mm -hmm. Palestine, mm -hmm. our Zion." Yeah. And 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 by 1885, uh, reform movement said, "We we no longer consider ourselves to be." to be uh, a nation, we're members of a religious faith. Mm -hmm. the, and while the Reform Judaism might have made a U-turn over the years, by, by the 1930s and, and afterward, some of those uh, ideas are still floating around. Many American Jews still see their Jewishness, at best, by the way, mm -hmm. as kind of a, of, of a religion mm -hmm. or a faith, in, in mm -hmm. a very Protestant way, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Not as a uh, um, comprehensive way of life which, which, which uh, merges community, faith, uh, ethnicity, peoplehood, and so on, mm -hmm. but rather compartmentalize it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, tell me about your own perspective. I mean, obviously, you, you, you've chosen a, a particular entry points into the study of yeah. American Jews. One of them is the, for example, the views of Yiddish speakers uh, in the United States toward the other, yeah, right. toward the, uh, the, the non-Jews, principally in New York and in the Eastern Seaboard. Yeah. Now you're moving into a discussion of, uh, of Yiddish speakers in the United States view of blacks. So what, what insights do those two um, uh, studies give you into this particular phenomenology? I, I think it has to, for our debate today, I think it has to do with the, the, the nexus between liberalism or progressivism yeah. and Judaism. Mm -hmm. Because I think as some, as some uh, observers, commentators have said, Jack Wertheim, mm -hmm. in a recent book, um, I think the new, um, it's called The New uh, American Judaism, mm -hmm. they refer to the fact that for many American Jews, uh, their, their Jewishness or their Judaism is hinged upon liberalism, upon mm -hmm. progressive mm -hmm. views. Mm -hmm. And that's why you, you, you hear a lot, tikkun olam, repair the world, the yes. world uh, tzedek tzedek tirdof, justice, justice shall you pursue, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and uh, many, many kind of buzzwords that help many people who have very minimal literacy in Judaism mm -hmm. uh, say, well, but we are standing, we yeah. are standing, yeah. uh, this is what our ancestors did, we're simply continuing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think he, he rightly laments the fact that there is, the, it, it's kind of, a slide toward the empty and the platitude. I mean, uh, in a sense, um, focusing on those buzzwords mm -hmm. and then reimagining yourself as simply we are we're another ch you know another part of this chain mm -hmm. of of really liberal universal views. Reform yeah. Judaism began doing that in the nineteenth century. You can say that some people began earlier. By the late twentieth century, early twenty first century, many American Jews cannot understand themselves outside of that mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. That perspective might be sweet, might be enticing. It's ahistorical. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it takes, uh, it's not even picking and choosing. It, it's really, it's the most, uh, it, it's scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. My studies have tried to show that if you're talking about historical experience, historical experience did not make Jews necessarily uh, identify down, so to speak, with the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. If anything, they identified up with the, mm -hmm. with the ruling classes. That mm -hmm. was a much more mm -hmm. common uh, Jewish historical experience. Yeah. So those uh, studies kind of, in a sense, questioned yeah. this nexus that many, until today, many American Jews in the Pew uh, survey, many of them speak about social justice as much more important than connection to Israel or knowing anything about Judaism, not, not to mention practicing Judaism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps you've already answered this question, but uh, if so, I, I sort of missed it. So uh, do, do you see this phenomenon of, uh, let's say, of substituting substance for a certain kind of, uh, you know, a slogan, something something useful, something usable, um, that, that it has at least the virtue of being in Hebrew, right? Do you see that as a consequence primarily of, let's say, uh, secularization in general, or do you see this as as a specific outcome of, of this unique American environment for Jews? It, I think it's a great question because yeah. secularism as, as, a, as an ideology was, was a strong feature 
among many American Jews, you had ideologies when, when the Jewish labor movement, when Jewish socialism, later communism were strong, you had a certain sphere mm -hmm. of, of people who were secular, but still very ethnically Jewish. Yeah. It was via Yiddish culture, via you know, different venues, communal venues, living in the same neighborhoods and so on. Mm -hmm. Today, it's very different because first of all, uh, those uh, leftists, those left of center uh, ideologies after the 1940s uh, are declining. Today, today you have a mini revival. You can, can talk about some of the supporters of Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. But again, mm -hmm. that Jewishness um, is not even ephemeral. It's very thin and sometimes even non-existent because some of the adherents there of those ideologies believe that Judaism or Jewishness is kind of tribalism mm -hmm. and they would like to reject it. Mm -hmm. so, so secularism was always strong. Today, I think it's um, if there is secularism or lack of belief, you don't have the Jewish background or the Jewish community to kind of be a balancing uh, mm -hmm. uh, influence. Mm -hmm. So uh, those people are not any more anchored to any Jewish community mm -hmm. uh, or, or to Jewish heritage. And, and again, not in the religious sense, but yeah. in the cultural sense. Right. So what is left? There is no, let's say, no Jewish neighborhood, such as it existed in the 19th century. You, you still There's have no some. Yiddish. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, you go well, to the Upper West Side in Manhattan. Well, sure. Yeah, of course. But outside, I mean, let's say here in Tucson, Arizona, course, yeah. I mean, everybody is in a suburb, right? right, it's right. A suburb of what? Who knows? But it's a suburb. And, uh, <laughs> There's no center. There's yeah. no center. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I mean, is, is it fair to say that uh, that identity then hinges, as you said before, on some uh, Protestantish uh, notion of religion, or on, let's say, on politics, particularly for those who have abandoned traditional religiosity? It, it's a great. I mean, I think again, a great question. The, the Protestant, it's for people who actually believe in the religion. Yeah. If, according to the Pew uh, uh, survey. So many people are uh, religiousless. I mean, they, they do not identify as Jews, not in the, definitely not in the religious sense, yeah. some of them not in the ethnic sense. Right. So for those people, um, the justice, justice, you should, or, or mending the world becomes the, 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 the focus. Not, not just the focus, it becomes the very, the very essence. Yeah. And they cannot distangle that or say, well, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. What is there behind those yeah, slogans? And yeah. they see it the here and the now, right. uh, rather than have a certain, you know, looking back and say, well, you know, there is much more to that context. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and, and therefore, I think you, you can speak about a certain dilution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Do, well, talk a little bit more uh, about the, uh, the American Jews, or some American Jews, let's say, nervousness about uh, nervousness with a tribalism, right? Do you think that there's something about the American context which makes this a particular concern? Uh, I, I think, for example, of the contrast with, even with France, which is theoretically such a lay state, nonetheless, it seems to me to be founded on the, uh, at least the, the, the conception of Frenchness uh, as, as something that is linguistic, something that is, that is cultural. Whereas here, what you, it seems to me, what you have, tell me if you think it's, it's, it's correct, is something more like a civic identity rather than one that is ethnic and therefore Jews in order to belong to the great American whole perhaps don't don't uh, don't feel so comfortable about uh, framing their own identity in ethnic terms no I, th I think this is exactly the point that will Herberg in a uh -huh. very in a similar book uh, called the Protestant Catholic Jew in the mid 50s he, he made exactly that point mm -hmm. America was always I mean the Constitution it, uh, cherishes and, and, and really institutionalizes religious freedom. Mm -hmm. So to say that you're different in religious terms was always something that was considered to be legitimate. Yeah. Many of, you know, the first Puritans, the very first secessionists, people who seceded from the Church of England came to those blessed shores and, mm -hmm. you know, found their, you know, Zion on the hill, yeah. Jerusalem yeah. upon a hill. Coming to the 1950s, most American Jews by the 1950s, for example, are no longer observant. Mm -hmm. But they cannot put their, they cannot really put their uh, difference or can, they cannot distinguish themselves in ethnic or national terms because American patriots yeah. and American nationalism. Right. So Particularly they, as they move west. As and, they move, the, yeah. move west, exactly. Right. As, as they move to new communities. Yeah. But also I would say even, even in, within their neighborhood or, or suburbs, mm -hmm. th th there is a problem by the 50s, Cold War America, to say, look, we mm -hmm. are... Mm -hmm ethnically different or nationally different, I mean, yeah. th that would not fly. Right. So religious difference right. is the legitimate way, even though most people are not are not religious. So mm -hmm. they build those great synagogues, which they don't go to. Yeah. But what they did do, and, and, and that was for, for quite a few generations, the community, the neighborhood, the uh, the kind of the close proximity was the, the you know, the, uh, the, the basis of the community. So people would would be neighbors and they socialize together, go to the same schools, and, and, and therefore also marry yeah, within yeah. the community. Right. Once those things are, and, and from the 60s, 70s, you have geographical, you know, demographical changes, mm -hmm. 
that is no longer the bedrock of community. Yeah. And then yeah. you're stra you know, okay, what would be the bedrock? Because you're not really, you don't believe, and, sure. and a synagogue cannot do that, but you don't have any more the, what some sociologists call the second settlement, right. you know, areas, or even in the suburbs that, that, that had a concentration of Jews. And I think this is the struggle, and this is the uh, yeah. challenge yeah. today. You know, I, I, I happen to agree with that last point, and actually, my perception of the of the problem is what drew me to the study of young American Jews mm -hmm. and their relationship to Israel and to Zionism. Mm -hmm. uh, if we understand uh, Zionism as perhaps the most successful uh, uh, political, social, and cultural expression of Jewish nationality, at least in the and, last century, uh, at least in the last century, yeah. exactly, yeah, in modern times, yeah. um, I think we, you know, it, it's it behooves us to ask how it is that American Jews make sense of that. And one of the things that I found in my my subjects is that those who somehow learn in their early lives to conceive of themselves as part of an extended family rather than uh, part of a religious group per se, mm -hmm. those, are, those are the ones who at least cultivate a, a potential for identifying with yeah. Israel in later life. Now that, that potential is not always realized. Uh, it depends on other experiences. For example, one of the things I found is that to the extent that young American Jews have formative experiences when they're adolescents, when they're young adults in Israel or in connection to Israelis, for example, when they have Israeli friends, Israeli mentors, then they learn to associate their their uh, their um, developing identity, their independent identity, with something that appears to, to them to be an extension of their own family, right? The, the collective Jewish family as, uh, let's say, as... Um, uh, formulated in Israeli terms. Uh, what's also interesting is that Israeli uh, culture, the culture of young adults, let's say, is to American Jews a somewhat surprise. To American Jews who identify with Israel when they're, let's say, in their twenties, mm -hmm. is a very surprising uh, breath of fresh air. It seems to them to be a, a an alternative way of being Jewish. Not One, to be religious, but to, a, yeah, a, yeah, precisely, yeah. precisely yeah. that it, it's a, it's a way yeah. of being Jewish without the um, and the imperative of, of kind of traditional religiosity, right. right? And by the way, there are those who, who lean toward the religious, and, and for them, there is also an alternative religiosity represented in Israel, that is to say, represented, let's say, by the uh, national religious, right. who are relatively uh, flexible, who are, who are ardent without being, you know, extra punctilious and right. so yeah. forth. But for the vast majority, let's say, of what you might call... Non-Orthodox. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Non-Orthodox Jews, uh, those who come from Reform backgrounds, unaffiliated backgrounds, and right, conservative right. backgrounds, for them, the uh, the way of life, let's say, of, of young Tel Aviv yeah. Jews is, is very galvanizing, right? The idea that you 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 are a Jew in in an unselfconscious manner, right. in, a, in, a, in a modern manner, uh, in a manner that is um, that is completely unapologetic, yeah, you know, course. and that does not re does not rely upon the constant justification of your place in society. Plus, you're not a minority. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Be yeah. Precisely because you're not a minority, you don't have to say, "Well, I'm I'm good. My politics course, are good, course, and therefore yeah. I fit here, yeah. and I can I can identify with you." No, the, the question of identification is not is not open right, at all. Right. Um, in fact, uh, it's really other minorities in Israel who face that issue, right? The, right. the, the, the Druze, who have been reasonably successful in integrating uh, Israeli Arabs yeah. and so forth. But for, for Jews, this is not an issue. Now, there are some uh, parentheses, there are some Israeli Jews who are very, very secular or very secularist, who say, you know, rather um, uh, bitterly, I'm not uh, Jewish, I'm Israeli. Yeah. But uh, the truth is that yeah, I'm, my prediction is that by the time they turn thirty, <laughs> by the time they, they will realize. Kids, that, but they have kids. They, they will realize that it's more complex than that. Yeah. And that uh, somebody who speaks Hebrew and who, who recognizes that language as part of the cultural baggage lives the Jewish calendar, lives, whether you like it or calendar. not. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Such a person's identity as a Jew is not really in question. And by the way, that's yeah. why when in two thousand and six, when the American Jewish Committee celebrated its centennial, yeah. and uh, Abe Aleph Bet Yoshua, Abraham B. Yoshua, the Israeli novelist. He came and like any good Israeli, immediately insulted his hosts. And, and he said, and he said to them, look, yeah. your Jewishness, I mean, right. only in Israel I can Is live. It's complete. It's, it's complete. You compartmentalize it. Yeah. And many people got offended by that. And yeah. he said, look, I'm not talking. And, and, and he's kind of the old school of, you know, Shlilat Galut, maybe of uh, the idea mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. you can be fully Jewish only in, in, a, in a Jewish yeah. land yeah. when you speak. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think for America, America, um, 
I mean, many organizations, you know, mm -hmm. there are many protests, they published a whole booklet about that. Mm -hmm. But but in a sense, there was a kernel of, you know, there is something true to that, that American Jews are, and, and there's no, you know, there's no, they're Americans, that's their mm -hmm. nationality. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I think when the, you had the ethnic ways by the 70s, people were negotiating them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I want to think out loud about this, this aspect for a second, and then pose a couple of questions to you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems to me that often when scholars uh, try to understand the American Jewish reality, and they refer, for example, to the compartmentalization of religion and ethnicity, on the other hand, and things like that. Uh, their their approach is, is sometimes viewed uh, as as uh, reactionary, right? As something that that perhaps uh, harkens back to an to an ideal uh, that cannot past, be yeah. that cannot be reconstructed, and and furthermore, point out, look, uh, American Jewry is is labile in the way that it has to be here. It's preferable, for example, to have disaffected Jews enter the the fold of their of their vibrant culture uh, through the through the let's say through the uh, conduit of reform Judaism however lax and however let's say um, boundaryless it may may or seem. even more to the yeah. left or renewal Judaism, or renewal Judaism I mean if uh, yeah. you take a look at Shaul Magid uh, uh, po um, American post Judaism yes, yes, and, yes. and uh, Robert Manukin the Jewish American paradox those people who say well you know lineage mm -hmm. they say in, in the American sphere today in the American in the American life today lineage should not matter yeah. Yeah. If you feel Jewish, you feel yourself to be Jewish, you should be Jewish. Right, right. And so it's not even a big tent. It's much more a big tent. It's basically an open admission uh -huh, ticket. Uh -huh. You feel Jewish, yeah, therefore right. you are Jewish. Yeah, do, do you see that as, as, as problematic? Not, not, I'm not asking you for your personal opinion, but do you see that as somehow engendering a problem? Because if, if all that, if what is, um, let's say, put on a pedestal is subjectivity, then anybody can, anything goes, right? That, I think... This is the crux of the problem today, yeah. uh, because on the one hand you don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, someone who, who uh, exclude people. You don't want to be exclusionary. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, Judaism or Jewish civilization as a historical phenomenon, mm -hmm. and again, it's not what we want today, but as a historical phenomenon, yeah. usually had you know admission gates and yes. had fairly uh, clear rules. And I think that's what American Jews are are, are really uh, struggling uh, with, it. struggling yeah. with, especially with. We have uh, three quarters of intermarriage mm -hmm. among the non-Orthodox, yes. uh, and that's why there were books like Double or Nothing. Yes, I mean, yes. how do you bring about people who have one, and let's say a Jewish father, right, or, right. or people who actually do not have Jewish lineage but were married uh, into mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with Jewish spouses? How do you do that? And I think that in, in a liberal democratic society, and I don't want to even start talking, but maybe we should talk about with with uh, maybe there is a rise of anti-Semitism mm. or not. I was precisely this, going to ask you about that. This yeah. is a this is a challenge. Yeah. This is a challenge. How do you how do you raise your kids with with, with Jewish mm -hmm. content, mm -hmm. but without seeming to yes. be exclusionary yes. because yes. that's a non-American thing? Yeah, it seems that uh, look. It, I agree with you that uh, talking about a crisis is is, is trite. It's a, it's a bit of a, a cop out, right? At the same time, I do see that this chapter is new in as much as well for example i read via the uh, pew study mm -hmm. that something like 33 percent of american jews who were surveyed have both a christmas tree and a hanukkah yeah, or, right. or a hanukkah lamp in their homes or hanukkah bush uh, hanukkah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It, right? whatever that may be it's yeah, not, yeah. in other words it's not a traditional item yeah, of course. and so this suggests and i, I really i i think in in modern history an unprecedented degree of of even syncretism or kind of a, a, a you know a combination of motifs yeah, yeah, that absolutely. was certainly taboo to the uh, to the even parents, in Weimar Germany, parents. yeah, precisely, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Not not that there hasn't been you know synthesis in, throughout Jewish history. There certainly of has. Course, I mean, of but uh, but uh, this is unique for the modern period, and particularly given the the background, familial backgrounds, and the cultural backgrounds of the people who are who are um, who are forming this kind of uh, strange right. mix between uh, Christian slash. Uh, you know, American patriotism and Jewish affiliation, right? right? So there's a 33%, and then there are something like 20% who, who light uh, um, candles on Sabbath, no. right? So these are, in a sense, the two poles. Now, mind you, it could be that some of the people who, who uh, light candles Still are also the same people right. who, are, who are putting the, the Hanukkah bush in, in the And by the way, by the way, um, and yeah. there's, the poll is a little bit more radical because you have many Jews that, who might put only 
uh, the Christmas precisely, tree precisely. or not put anything. Well, you, you, so, I yeah. think you alluded to this yeah. earlier, the, the fact that some enormous amount of people, are I think opposite of a million, have, yeah. have one parent at least who is Jewish and do that themselves consider themselves Jewish. Right. So that's, that I think is unprecedented. I mean, oh, I, people I, with two uh, Jewish parents who consider them and say we don't have a religion. Uh, we don't. Exactly. They, they reason because we are not religiously observant or right. traditional believers, therefore we're not Jewish, right. which implies a complete divorce of ethnicity and religion. Although, I mean, to, to defend, I mean, I, I know that we should, I mean, they, like, take sides. The, the, yeah. Pew, uh, the Pew research also shows that many people uh, see descent and culture as the more important thing, yes. right? Because then they can, so where well, we have a heritage, we, you know, we choose whether to celebrate it or not, but, you know, it's in our blood or it's in our genes. So in a sense, there is a reintroduction of, of um, essentialistic, notions. of essentialistic, yeah. almost racial, right, biological right, right. components, which is very interesting uh, too. Mixed with the idea that, uh, and this goes along with the notion that a sense of humor makes you Jewish, right, yeah. that <laughs> being a Jew is sort of like being a gadfly. Uh, that yeah. the purpose of being Jewish always is to in the be opposition. Again, always in the opposition, yeah. always criticizing, right. and uh, to uh, refer to uh, Irving Greenberg's formulation, yeah. always there to be a goading minority. This yeah. is what I call the Jiminy Cricket model of <laughs> Jewishness. Yeah. You know, not not the Jiminy Cricket, yeah, but, but uh, the Disney's Jiminy Cricket yeah, was there yeah. to to show uh, Pinocchio how to be a moral human being. Right. But Always the more, and that's the reform Judaism worked on that. I mean, we're exactly. the, that's our mission among the nations, right. to be kind of a light into the nation. Right. It doesn't mean to have a Jewish state. It means to, you live in those, and you right. set the moral. Which, which to me implies we are not the protagonists of history. We are devices to the moral salvation of humanity. But not subject, but almost yeah, yeah. subject. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was, trying, I was yeah. trying to, to make an arc here, but I, I, we saw about lots of very yeah. interesting points. But yeah. I, So what I, what I see here is a new, perhaps, tell me if you think yeah. this is fair, a new chapter of American Jewish history in which on one hand you have this tremendous uh, cultural variety, a kind of polarization, uh, of cultural types like the the Shabbos observers yeah. and the uh, and the Hanukkah bush yeah. uh, people. Okay, and on the other hand, you have the entry from the outside of of uh, of what some people call a resurgent naked anti-Semitism, right? right. And yeah. I'm not just talking about the the massacre in Pittsburgh. I'm talking about you know Charlottesville and 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 right. uh, campus protests against Israel, which really uh, often do not differentiate between Jews and uh, and and. Uh, and Israelis, or and yeah. so forth, um, or or they call all Jews Zionists, exactly, which, which is a Soviet. There's I mean, a kind of slippage. Think, exactly. I mean, it's a very interesting period to live in, and I'm not sure it's good or bad. That yeah. it seems to be a, a replay of the 1930s when 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 Jews in the world, also in America, but definitely in Europe, were squeezed between a radical right, exactly, uh, a nat uh, you know, anti-Semitism, which is based on racism and uh, Nazism, Correct. and and radical left which is also anti-Semitic, but uses many things to, many uh, terms to disguise that and, mm -hmm. and put on a universalist face. Mm -hmm. And when you have a universalist face, that's already kind of very attractive to some Jews, especially those who consider themselves progressive or liberal. Sure. Uh, and they say, oh, well, it, it has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then they use, and then they use keywords. And, and so, and it reminds me of the 30s when indeed those two, those two poles, opposite poles, kind of squeeze Jews in between right. them. The but radical would, right wouldn't you radical say, though, that this is qualitatively new in the sense that the Jews who are squeezed in the middle yeah. do, are not as anchored in, let's say, a sense of, of, of ethnic cohesiveness as their ancestors. They're more diffused. They're, they're more, more diffused. They're, yeah. they're more uh, diverse in terms of their understanding of what identity is. Right. And therefore, the, the responses that they will give will probably vary accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was a very interesting uh, phenomenon when, when modern anti-Semitism began in the 1870s, and, and some of those people would take uh, pieces from the Talmud, and then, so you see, that's what Jews think about, you know, Goim. Many of the German Jews who heard it said, they were surprised, they were shocked, so there is no way this is Judaism, because <laughs> right. they were already so removed yes. from any kind of integration into those sure, textual sure. traditions, they said it can't be. I think many American Jews today the people, especially people who believe in tikkun olam and, and justice, justice you should pursue, mm -hmm. if you even present to them a more, let's say, uh, a, you know, we could say more traditional, a more historical version of mm -hmm. Judaism, said, no, 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 this is too particularistic, That's right. uh, this is chauvinism, uh, yeah. we cannot accept that. Yeah. Now, so, now, if you put the anti-Semitism, and <clears throat> some of them don't have necessarily the, the defense mechanism that will allow them to come and say, no, no, just a second, I yeah. can, I can yeah. defend this identity in the name of A, B, and C. Sure. Because if they're so vested in universalism, uh, in, 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 in negating any kind of particularism, mm -hmm. they will be very vulnerable mm -hmm. to someone who, from the left, will say, you're chauvinist or yeah. you're fascist. And I, I don't, you know, it depends on what right, terminology. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that might be the difference. Sure. 
that they might be more vulnerable if they're not steeped or you know forget mm-hmm, steeped mm-hmm. if they don't come from a context of, of a Jewish community yes, that is more cohesive yeah they might be okay what do we do with that right. when people are calling us Zionists and, and you can see many yeah. undergrads I mean many young students today especially on campuses you know uh, they, yeah, they have a rather rather narrow uh, view of what it means to be Jewish. I, I remember one, one student saying, well, uh, my Jewishness consists of, uh, and this, here she's quoting, uh, uh, um, um, uh, what's the name of that rabbi? Uh, um, anyway, he says, um, I'm going to uh, pray with my feet. Uh, Heschel. Uh, Abraham uh, Joshua Abraham Heschel. Heschel right? When he marched with Martin Luther King when in Selma. Martin yeah. Luther King. Uh, the problem, as as uh, David Chazoni points yeah. out, he's a scholar of, of Zionism yeah. and a, you know, in many ways a, 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 an intellectual activist. Um, uh, he says, "Well, the problem is that uh, that Heschel wrote a great many books. He didn't just walk. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't his only uh, his only came from function. a Hasidic lineage in Poland, right? I mean, so, so, so uh, without knowing the background, there's yeah. very little uh, to do with the with Absolutely. the pr- with the prescription. Um, and listen, I think if I may uh, toot my early modernist horn, sure. not for my own sake, but for everybody else who studies Ameri- uh, you know pre pre modern Jewry, um, the degree of of the depth and complexity of Jewish life is, I think, lost." On American Jews who think of uh, of uh, of Judaism as something relatively analogous to uh, to say to Christianity or even to Islam uh, or to some kind of progressive right, belief the, in the, which is not I, I, I perceive yeah. a, a very strong um, a, impulse to try to synthesize to distill to uh, to essentialize what being Jewish means where in reality the the traditional concept is is by no means uh, uh, univocal. It's contradictory. It, it, it's contradictory. It, it, Very it nuanced. Lacks, exactly. Yeah. It lacks a, a coherent philosophy. Of course. I mean, there are parameters, of course, and I think you can uh, understand them anthropologically. But to demand of of Jewish culture the kind of simplicity, the kind of elegance that is found in purely religious systems, I, th- I think is is something that drives uh, that drives many many Jews in the United States. Uh, well, not well, or yeah or or they do it and yet they they miss, they lose a lot. The, uh, absolutely, yeah. that's why when uh, a recent article which was I uh, called the, the uh, helpless refugees or the seed of Amalek yeah. about whether uh, America or, or Europe should should accept Syrian refugees and and you hear many rabbis give many differences. Those differences are not just the differences between branches of Judaism, you know, right. Orthodox, right. conservative, reform, renewal, but they're also there in. Judaism itself, it speaks in multi voices. Mm-hmm. Many of them are not. Many of them are not far from. They're quite right, illiberal. Right. And and the idea is that if you if you drink the Kool Aid, so and mm-hmm. believe that Judaism is tikkun olam, mm-hmm. repair the world, whatever and in, in whatever you know garb it might come today, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. might lose a lot of the nuances and a lot of the historical experience. Yeah. Or if you believe that the histor- the Jewish historical experience is always identifying with minorities, yeah. in which I mean many t- in modernity, yes, in right. other definitely not in other eras, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. then you, you lose the nuance and you lose the content. Absolutely. Now, uh, somebody might uh, respond to this uh, by saying something along the lines of, well, you know, uh, everybody knows that for every three Jews you find at least five opinions. <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> arguing, day, yeah. arguing is what we're good, at, yeah. we're good at, that is in fact one of the essences of being Jewish and so forth. So, by, of course, uh, Jewishness is multivocal, is multilayered and so forth. So, um, so how, how does one respond? How, do, how would you respond to that? In other words, yeah, sure. I mean, there is a lot of nuance, yeah. but uh, that is not necessarily something on which to hang your hat, is it? Right. But the thing is, uh, actually, if someone would come and say that, say, well, you know, Mazel Tov, this is a, <laughs> it's a great, you know, it's a great insight. It's a great insight. Yeah. And it shows you how hard it is, how difficult and contradictory it is to try and distill uh, uh, um political view, a political agenda, right. which would be very presentist, a historical, right. say, well, you know, it's tikkun olam, so right. I'll do A, B, and C. Right. Uh, they are not doing that, so they're, uh, they don't understand what Jewishness yes. is. Yes. And I don't see that, actually, I wish that someone would, would recognize that the multiplicity of views that, uh, and, 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 and nuances, and that would allow you to say, look, you cannot just say that uh, Judaism is tikkun olam, mm-hmm. and and t- you can say aniyeh chakutmim. You know, charity begins at home. Mm-hmm. There is, you know, there's almost in the Talmud yeah, there's the formula. By the same token, I might add, yeah. you don't say, uh, uh, you know, being Jewish is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, you know, just a kind of a, a, a <laughs> an instinctive uh, nationalism. Right. I right. mean, it's it's both. And it's neither, not just particularism. Right? It's right. just not uh, right. universalism. Yeah. And at different points in time, Jews usually kind of re shaped and refigured what they what we, what does it mean to be Jewish right. and that's our task if you already have 
uh, a priori, a priori kind of assumptions, if you know, kind of underlying assumptions. Okay, Jew Jewishness is this and this and this, and it's mm -hmm. usually very liberal and universalist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're missing the point, yeah. and yeah. you're flattening it, and that's what I think uh, Wertheimer yeah. was writing. You're flattening it to, to, to a kind of something that you can do, in you can be a member of the ACLU and do those right. th right. same things. I mean, you don't need the Jewishness. Um, for that. Right, but this is, I mean, I, as we've said, this is not just a question of, of, the, of the, let's say, the liberal left, it's a question of the, of the, of the right as well, right? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the idea of a simple political litmus test for Jewishness so, so is completely... Never uh, forget, I mean, never yeah. forget what? I mean, so it's, you, have, you have many lessons that, that you can take. Right, right. And, and I, no, I, 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 if, if I may, it, I, I see a lot of Americans just criticizing each other for exactly what they're doing. Yeah. In other words, some criticize, uh, let's say, uh, pro apac Jews of being, of using Israel as a golden calf. Right. And, uh, and, and, you know, in response to that, the, uh, the let's say, the, the people of the right, because, yes. I mean, I hate these labels, but that's the way it's, it's understood in, 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 in daily parlance, they, um, they attack the others as being somehow, you know, uh, uh, capos or, yeah. or, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. or, or universalists so, or something yeah. like that. But, but that, that's too simple. The, yeah. Those, uh, by the way, it's good that you use couples. That, that's an, uh, an example of how you use Jewish uh, historical experience and, and you kind of twist it yeah. to fit it into your uh, current agenda. Okay, yeah. okay. Very good. Uh, uh, Gil, I'm, I'm told that we're out of time. Okay, okay so anyway, uh, I hope this has been enlightening at some level. It's yeah. always fun yeah. to yeah. talk to you. Always. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Uh,